start talking shit, shall we? I've not done this in a couple of weeks, and I immediately get nervous. As soon as we've had any sort of break, I completely forget how this goes. Well, I just bash in, Laz. Bash on, brother. Sounds right. Well, welcome back to another lockdown episode of Perth Premier Podcast, Monkey Sword Fight, with me, your host, Jordan Patrick. Hello, folks. And over there, looking at his phone, which is quite embarrassing because we're on video, is... The big uh, ex- okay. Uh, first of all, let's not start this podcast off with accusations. Okay, I uh, I've always got accused of not being prepared for word with dots. I'm currently preparing for word with dots. But then, and we all know I got trouble reading, so I'm prepare. I'm rehearsing. The, but does the fact that you're doing it on video at the start of the show not lend itself to the fact that you're never prepared? I am. Pre- I have it here in front of me. It's right here. I'm looking at it. I'm getting ready to go. Here? The big nip, the most offensive man on the podcast, Mr. <laughs> Michael Dots. So what's your yeah. words with thoughts? Alex, I'll brace you for this one. Mike's about to impart some knowledge that may change your entire outlook on life. So just be ready for All right. That. I'm ready. Are you ready? The, the most we can hope for is to create the best possible conditions for success and then let go of the outcome. Yeah, fair enough. Mediocre? Uh, it's, it's, it's not your worst one. I'll say that for sure. But you're, you're, you're still, you've not quite got back to the, uh, like the, the, the pre-lockdown height. So you knocked out a couple of good ones in a row. That was that was from uh, that was Phil Jackson from uh, uh, the Last Dance. We'll, we'll get into that. We've also got your old dad, Andy Mack, the pair Sharpierlo up there. What's happening? Yeah, Andy, did I see you cracking into a nice wee bottle of red there? Oh. You seen but the glass I'm drinking just... it from? Perfect. <laughs> oh, you're frozen. Fast. I can't see. I'm frozen. You got a nice, you got a nice wee sauvignon on there. I think is it. Is it... No, we Shiraz tonight. A wee Shiraz. Uh, Argentinian the... Shiraz 2019 Las Moras. Oh, wow. Well. Thirteen uh, percent. Please drink responsibly. Keep that in mind. So... <laughs> is it? Oh, we've lost Mike. There he goes. We also no, joined... I had to turn my video off to see Andy's. Uh, we're also joined this week by Mr. Alex Hawkins over there in the corner. Hello. Um, Alex was uh, one of the guys who did uh, one of the, the artworks for our hundreds episode. He did the the latest iteration of Maurice. Um, so welcome, sir. We've been pestering he's, you for a while. To draw a monkey. <laughs> who doesn't want to draw a monkey with swords? My th- my favourite thing at the time was that you texted you and I was like, you said something about people coming into your your room and you were just like, the strangest thing is they would not even look twice if I told them I was drawing a monkey with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's well, basic. As it's usually themed fruit, and anything less than that, it's fine. Yeah, there's uh, Alex. Alex has a series on his Instagram page, which is Bat Mango, which is a vigilante mango. Which is, if you're looking for just some quick fire laughs, it's on his Instagram page. We'll hand out his handle at the end of the show. Um, it's a it's a series of mango puns that are terrible. Like you've got mango and cash, you know, the last mango. Mango Unchained. <laughs> Mango <laughs> Unchained. Mango Unchained is a particular favourite. So uh, well, we we'll just we'll crack on. We'll do some we'll do some shit chat and then we'll we'll grill our guests as we usually do in our uneducated interview style. But how how's everyone been finding the last couple of weeks of lockdown? Is it first of all actually is everyone enjoying the Tory implosion that's currently happening at the moment? Uh, yeah yeah it's not going to be. Uh, anything, I don't think so. I, it's, I, I just saw quickly on Twitter there that uh, Boris is standing by his man there, so I think this will all be swept under the rug by Wednesday. I, I did just watch a video where two police officers had went to uh, the, the guy's house and no one answered the door. <laughs> he's, he's out again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just right. well, we won't get too much of that, but how's everyone personally, Alex, what about yourself? How have you been finding it? <laughs> It's fine. Actually, for me, it's an excuse to just bunk it down, and I quite enjoy that, so I'm I'm all over it. <laughs> so, we have been, uh, I don't know if uh, the boys might follow you from the page, Alex has recently been doing uh, um, illustrations, like doing old movie posters with his own unique style, and it's been very interesting. So have you been found, have you found that you've been more or less creative during lockdown? Uh more because generally what happens is i start to watch a film i haven't watched in ages because i've run out of things to watch initially and then i was like oh the poster for that's pretty cool like, <laughs> so yeah it just leads into that which turns the two-hour film into like a two-day project 
Well, I suppose you're probably the only person that gets a repetitive strain injury from lockdown, not from masturbating. So, like, that must be nice <laughs> to have oh, that. Tell yeah, me about it. <laughs> Gold medal I can wear. <laughs> no, it's not that. I draw my <laughs> Oh, yeah, actually, that is a good one. Because, Andy, it seems like, I don't know if you've been the same, because you seem like you've been, so, Alex, for your for your benefit, Andy's a music producer and musician, and it, it seems like any time I look at your Instagram now, Andy, more often than not, you're working on another project. So, have you, are you... Yeah, it's been great. Actually, this week, um, I'm mastering a jazz album, so a live jazz album. It's a tribute oh. to Billie Holiday. Um, I'm doing that for a label out in LA at the moment. I uh, had Sean Ahmed, our friend SC Universal, was in today dropping off mixes for a track he needs mixed. And then I caught an interesting one on Twitter. There's a Shetland-born, Edinburgh-based rapper, this this lassie called Smut the Girl. And okay. she's looking Smut for... Smut the Girl? Yeah, she's looking First, for... I was going to say Smut is an underused word, and I love her already. Yeah, well, <laughs> she put... A, tweet up she was saying she's like looking for a producer or like a mix engineer on the regular to mix and master her stuff so for folk to hit her up so i just hit her up and i was like look this is what i charge here's you know my history da, 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 da. so she's already sent me the stuff paid me for the mix and that's what i was doing before i jumped on the call with you guys um and i don't know like lockdown's just been great for me because so many people who have creative that i already work with are bunkered down writing away, creative, doing whatever they're doing, and then they still need me to mix and master it. They still need beats. So, to be honest, I'm actually busier than ever. And speaking about lockdown, how it's going, I'm going to be sad when it ends. I'm actually... <laughs> no, no, man. I, I've well gone over the hump. Like, you know, I'm, I'm on the soft <laughs> pants all day, Mike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, to be real, like, seriously, I am now starting to enjoy it. A couple of weeks ago, it was about... Uh, but... It is what it is, and I'm making the most of it. I think That's you have I was, to. I, I was saying to Mike earlier, like, I mean, the wee man had to pop out earlier, and I told him to go and get dressed, and he came back wearing jeans. And I was like, you know, you don't have to wear those if you don't want to. I was like, you can go and put your trackies on. He's like, no, it's fine. And it completely blew my mind that he'd actually chosen to wear <laughs> hard pants. Well, Dad, I have pride. I want to put on pants, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, Alex, we'll go back. So, let's just, we, I met Alex through working. And uh, it, I soon discovered he was the only person in the de- other person in the department of me that smoked. So we were immediately ostracised from the rest of the group because they were all, they all they're all the type of people that went out for runs on their lunch break. And so that was. Mm. But um, so we'll just like to say Alex is an artist. He's, so do you say it's, it's sort of cartoon design? I don't know how to actually describe it. Oh no, no cartoon. Cartoon is is probably the appropriate word for me. Kind of thing. When when did you start? Did you were you into comic books before you started drawing, or did you get into comic books because you started drawing? Oh no, it's but both of them have just gone on for as long as I know what's been going on. You know, I've got comic books from the eighties randomly, which are surprisingly well preserved. Like I think I think was a bit fastidious about them even back then. But uh, yeah, drawing has just been a thing that has always kind of happened. Uh, did we always? Did you have anyone like? Were you influenced by anyone in your family or were you like the outlier? Because you find it sometimes that you find people that come from families that are good at football or music or art and they're immediately good. But then you also find people who are really talented but have no like previous to it at all. Yeah, no, it was kind of just a thing I did, you know, like nobody in my family really did anything like that. Because I still know, because me and Mike talk about this is, Two men without any particular skills. I mean by the fact that, Alex, you can draw and Andy is a musician. And me and Mike just like to be near people like that who are very good at stuff so we can ask them what it's like. Sponge off them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so was it, did you, so did you, I know, so yeah, I recently I got you to do a, well you did the Maurice for us and I got you to do a commission for Mega's birthday. So is that something that just came across naturally as well or was it something that you were like, hey people, buy my drawings? Oh yeah, I've uh, I've been doing commissions on the side for a couple of years now, and uh, slowly, slowly, you know, you get more as they go, as people actually talk to each other. But I am terrible at advertising, so I'm surprised that has happened. <laughs> Just have that, yeah, because there's a lot of people that I was after reading your your Batman go scene. We've actually asked Alex to do the save the dates for me and Chuff's wedding, because you see some really nice ones, and that's I love the ones that you get, and they're all really 
pretty and uh, like with roses and stuff, but we really just want cartoon versions of ourselves drunk on champagne. You know, it's... that's yeah, kind of my niche. <laughs> I've seen the seen the one you done recently for your friends whose wedding got postponed. That was actually fantastic. Yeah, I, I put a lot of work into actually making it because it's them just basically passed out on a sofa after having drunk a bottle of champagne, which I figured would happen. And it's all about being like, right, so they'd be wearing their jogging bottoms by then. That's effectively like, Mike, you've been married as well. Like the, the wedding night itself is literally just you and your partner itching to get out of these really uncomfortable clothes while full and drunk, like in a hotel room. Like, it's not, there's nothing magical or romantic about a wedding night they are effectively just holy shit get this tie off me while i fall face down into my bed <laughs> so do you, do you find that as well so we did we touched on it before you say you're, you're big into your comic books do you find it difficult in this day and age where i know obviously we talk a lot about comic book movies but do you find it quite difficult do you find annoyed when you see people like just jumping on the bandwagon or do you think it's been good for comic books that all the films and stuff have happened no, I, d- I do think it's good, but there is a natural thing within you when, you know, you were the one kid at school who had the gall to bring out a Batman comic. And, you know, everyone looks at you and you're like, no, I support this. It's fine. And then now it's fine to do that. Everyone's doing it. Like, where's the suffering that goes with the art? You, know? you guys have not earned this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So is, do you think that um, with with the lockdown, you, you feel it's given you more time? So have you sort of changed your view on why you're doing it or do you find yourself picking and choosing your moments to get creative now because you have so much more time or do you kind of just fling yourself at it? No, it is kind of all the time simply because uh, I found the other week where I did get a bit of a RSI uh, and had to put it off for a couple of days. I, I got really bored in just a couple of days. I sort of forgot what I was doing and I was like, I could watch something on Netflix, but everything's on Netflix and I could play a video game, but then you just run around in a circle. Be like, ah, no. I think I don't know about anyone else, but I, I genuinely feel like I now just get to the end of the day where I've just cycled through Netflix. You won't, Andy, because you're busy and actually can have a life. Like, whereas, so I'm genuinely running out of time for Netflix, and sometimes just find myself just staring at the wall for twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh... I don't have my the PlayStation has really saved my ass the last couple of weeks. Like I really dove headfirst into the ghoulie, as Andy would say. Like it's uh, it, it's it's really really been a godsend. I I I bought it not well, I bought it a while ago, and I really feel like I've just gotten my money's worth in the last like month or so. <laughs> Do you are you have you been playing much games, Alex? You I remember you telling me you like to play some sort of maybe surreal type of games on the on the PlayStation. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's actually on the PC. I mean, I, I tried to buy a game, actually. Um, oh, my God, I've completely forgotten what it's called. But it's essentially this indie game where you play a detective who's having a breakdown and you decide how the story is going by you know, all the different things going on in his mind, which is fantastic, unless you're in a lockdown and it gets a little too real, a little too quick. <laughs> But you get to a bit where it's just really meta and you think, then convince yourself you're in a game, you're just someone being played of someone who's not allowed to leave their house and try and has to fend off insanity for as long as possible. Yeah, like I'm staring wistfully out the kitchen window and then being like, are they giving me this command? Like... <laughs> what was it? What was that um, That Black Mirror one they done? They choose your own adventure. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, Band yeah. Snatch. Yeah. Band of Snatch, that was yeah. I remember doing that a couple of times and then. I think I made the mistake one day of like binge watching Black Mirror, and I've just never been sadder. It was just <laughs> I was like hung over and stuck one on, and then ended up watching six. And I was like, why do I just want to go and cry in the shower for twenty minutes now? It's just brutal. Netflix should just sign you up for a therapist appointment if you watch more than like four hours straight. It's about, you have to go see. You have to go speak no, to someone. That- is like, are you still watching? It should be then, are you really still watching? <laughs> Why? Why are you still watching? Go outside, get some fresh air. One episode of the Black Mirror uh, limit. Otherwise, you would just find yourself in an existential crisis. However, I'm convinced we're now living in an episode of Black Mirror, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. yeah Charlie is like... behind it all. <laughs> so, how, how are you? What, what are your thoughts on the whole? Like you said, you said you're quite happy to hunker down. And the same with Andy. What about you, Mike? Alright, dude. Hiya. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> uh, boy. Go play some Fortnite. 
get a haircut. <laughs> get a haircut. Get a job. <laughs> oh, fuck off then. <laughs> what? Yeah, go for it. Parenting. <laughs> <laughs> he could have just, just asked you anything in there and you would have been like, yeah, yeah, go do it. Can I take the car around the corner? Yeah, yeah, just go drive. Fine. Just, 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 just make sure you fill the tank up. Just go. <laughs> That's, I don't know about you, but how have you found it, Mike, then? Have, like, are you seeing your girls a bit more then because of the homestead and then? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, Connie and I say this all the time. We're like some of the some of the few people who have not. I would. I don't want to say benefited from this, but we don't seem to be. We haven't been affected. Touch wood, like some other people have. I mean, it, it, this has allowed me to save a bit of money. Uh, this has allowed me to see my daughters a lot more, um, and it's allowed me to be more productive at work. If I'm being honest too, like it's that there's. You don't realize it until you're actually sitting at your desk at home or sitting wherever you work at home. Realize how much bullshit that you do at work that like, like it, it breaks up your day and it's probably good for you mentally to do. Yeah, like, to get up from your desk and wander around. But when you're not doing that, it's like, well, I've, you know, I've I'm going to get work done. To get the same amount of work done while still taking about 10 minutes every hour to wander through the kitchen and just got to <laughs> stand about and then come back. Yeah. I do, the, the coffee intake is way up. It's way oh, too God. high. Yeah. That's, it was, did you it's see that, that tweet? There was like a lot well, people say, was studies show that one in four people in Scotland have started drinking more. And someone else had just said, that means three in four people are lying as well. They're fucking lying. <laughs> Shit, they're lying bastards. <laughs> you know what? I, I had, um, uh, I don't know if I talk because we, we took a couple of days off, but the whiskey, the, I'll tell you my friend sent me over some whiskeys to taste. Yeah. Okay, sent me over about, I think there was like 15 or 18 different whiskey, like small, small, like 20 uh, CL. They look I guess like bottles of piss. <laughs> they did look like bottles of piss. Um, they were, it, it ran through them, but that toward the end of it, I was like, all right, let me take a little while off drinking now because <laughs> I, I need a little break. So I, I did buy a bottle the other day, though. So I'm waiting for that to come. That's going to come in the middle of the week and I'm going to get back on it. But I needed a little break. Was one man that always, whenever I whenever I go down south for work, Alex always puts me to shame with his coffee. Because not only does he have an instant coffee cup, but he has like one with a plunger in it. So he has a portable coffee cup with actual proper <laughs> like an actual, actual coffee in it. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh you man. Just stick it in the bottom, fill it with hot water, and then just plunge it. And yeah, you end up drinking coffee solidly all day. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie with that extractor fan got up the back there and like the background. <laughs> it looks like you got a grow farm on the go. I was going to say. <laughs> Hit me up by an ounce well, of if, if, if he just disconnects, then we know something's going on. <laughs> a couple ounces of cheese, mate. You just see him like immediately hit the background on his Skype, so it's just a desert island. He's like, you're distracted yeah. by the light. Oh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> By the worst part is I can up. turn on the fan and it will sound like that. Because <laughs> I always walk up in the office with like my Morrison's cheap ground coffee and Alex pulls out his little uh, eth- ethically reusable bag and sort of tips off to the kitchen. I'm but, going to look on Amazon for one of those cups as soon as we're done, by the way. Yeah, I recommend it. Although, yeah, like I say, it will mean you're drinking coffee constantly and then you need to keep decaf in the house just so you've got something to sort of supplement with <laughs> see when you you buy different coffees to then like bring you down that's when i think you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Any like problem it's, out. it's like the it's like the monologue at the start of wolf of wall street it's like ah, i drink seven coffees to get me through the day and then i have four decafs between 10 and 12 to bring me back down i sleep for three hours and then vibrate in my bed till four <laughs> yeah. i can't even decaf isn't allowed in my home by the way but uh, I got one of those um, Dolce Gusto kind of things with the pods, yeah. and uh, I ordered some of the the, the pods, but they, they go up to, I think it's from 1 to 11, and I ordered the 11 ones for the first time. So uh, if you see me running shirtless in town uh, in a couple of days when they come, you know what I'm on. It just be like one of those things when you see in America, people on like space or whatever it is getting taken down by four cops. <laughs> getting tasered. <laughs> by the way, yeah, t- getting shot with tasers. But I saw a video, random, of, of an old lady getting shot with a taser. And she ate that shit, which makes me think that tasers aren't that strong. Like she, she took it like a champ and got yeah. back up and was ready to roll. There's, I, I know it sounds bad, but there's, there's nothing. I have like a guilty pleasure for like every now and again when one of those stories reads in the paper, it's like crackhead uh, wrestles 12 cops and fights a dog. <laughs> before being subdued and you're like what is he on like what kind of fucking 
It's good crap. You want to go down though, innit? And <laughs> <laughs> in a, in a blaze of absolute glory. I remember speaking to a guy who was uh, from a part of Perth that's notorious for having sort of less savoury characters. And apparently his dad was once bit by a police dog. So his dad bit the police dog back. Hair of the dog, right? There you go. The I literal sense. <laughs> that's how you're going down. What does your dad do? Well, um, actually. <laughs> he's got, so he's getting bit- tested for rabies. He got bit by a dog. No, he bit the dog. He drew blood from the dog. So we think he has rabies now. That's what. <laughs> Well, they, died. they had to get the dog tested afterwards. Just to make sure. <laughs> Does, is there is that assaulting like a police officer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah. So, see, now that we're, we're getting to this stage in lockdown, but it's like, I had this weird moment yesterday where I was like, I realised that this is what I've been doing for the last nine weeks. Like, it's, it's become so normal that it just hits me every now and again. But is there like mm. anything else that you're doing now that you want to do once lockdown's finished? Wear yeah, more wear like, sweatpants. It's wear, wear sweatpants regularly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've now done like more than more than my fair share of conference calls while not having left my bed yet. See if there's like a really early one at like nine o'clock. I'll just whip the laptop onto like I'm still sort of perched up in bed. Like, yeah. I was saying that though. I went on a call and it wasn't with my usual people and it was in a different program. And I was sitting there and I, like, I had my hat off and my hair was like up and everything. I don't think I had a shirt on. And like all of a sudden my face popped up on the screen and I was like, ah, fuck. Like <laughs> luckily, luckily the call hadn't started yet, but like it gave you a preview of how you... Oh, and like, Teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swear to God, my arse just went... And I was like, fuck! <laughs> yeah, I refuse to put the camera on. Uh, no, no. For, obvious, for obvious reasons. Does anyone else, I don't know, like, like you, you've got Connie there, like, see the looks Megan gives me when she hears me on a call? It's like she doesn't know who I am anymore. She, like, yeah. She, she hears my work voice and hears me say things like, let's circle back around, and I want to punch myself <laughs> in the face. She's just like, ah, who the fuck are you? Like, I'm You're the just, circle back guy, aren't you? Oh, fuck. <laughs> let's take this offline, we'll mitigate these issues together, and then we'll come back to it next week for another meeting. If I hear the word mitigate one more fucking time, oh my god. All that the... business psycho babble. That's what reminds me of. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys follow Bob Mortimer on Twitter, but his yeah. Train Guy series. Oh I'm yeah, Carl, how's it going? That kind of guy. All the business fucking crap. Yeah, I'm disappointed that you're falling into that, Jordan. I can see Mike's already kind of <laughs> annoyed by it, and he's still in that environment. So <laughs> you know. Uh, what? You... You know what I do now? Sometimes, happen, especially man. toward the toward the end of the week, especially if I have a call, like when people go off down that rabbit hole of just like jargon and shit, I go, what does that mean? And then people always go, people <laughs> always go, oh yeah, well, we don't really know what that means either. So why are we talking this way? Why are we doing this to each other? Just to say what you mean so we can proceed and know what everyone's talking about. As a, as a, I, I used to work with a guy and like, I know loads of people like this, and he's like, a, it's the, the game of chicken when you're on a call. And you've finished your, your spiel and they don't say anything and your your instincts are all like cough, laugh, ask if he heard you're okay. But like and he just it's like a test. It's like yeah. first person to speak loses this argument. <laughs> I'm definitely a lurker in the group chats, like the work group chats and the, the work conference calls. And I'll be open about that. Like I sit there with my mic muted, my camera's not on, and then when I'm asked like Andy, what's happening with your students here, here and here? Boom, mic's off, fucking business head on. I take care of business. But after that, I'm just going to sit back and chill. Like, if everybody else is doing their bit, like, I also don't want them seeing me because it's like, it's not I have anything to hide, but it's more just like, man, I'm just like out my bed. It's very easy. It's very easy to like look bored as well. It's like in a meeting, your your face, you've got something on your phone. Focus on. Like, so yeah. Like I have, I've literally started like leaving my phone like face down next to me. Have to. More than often than not, someone will be on a, a like a, just an absolute dialogue, and I'll just be like, <laughs> "What do you think, Jordan?" And you're like, "Yeah, let's take that offline and come back to it next week." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If so is uh, I've been fucking watching a shit ton of Netflix, but then I end up watching the same shit again. So I'm really trying to like branch out. And try and rewatch something. So has anyone like rewatched something they've not watched for years during lockdown? Oof. Because I just I just recently rewatched. I don't know if anyone remembers this. A film called Rain of Fire. 
dragon oh, nice. Pokemon. Sorry, are we jumping into watching and listening at this point? I was, oh, wow. I was trying to yeah, have a natural cool. segue. I, I brought some reviews this week. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Right, well, more still, than so one. We'll do watching and listening. So, Alex, again, this is just a thing where we literally chat about things. And just for some background, Andy is notoriously, like, doesn't watch films. Is just YouTube, music, and FIFA. Like the man, and the man knows what he wants, and he likes what he knows. So, so <laughs> let me just tell you this straight off the rip. Then I it. don't have FIFA anymore. I deleted my Ultimate Team, and I deleted FIFA off my hard drive. Whoa! Well, Why? I kept, What's going on? Because I kept rinsing and grinding to build icon packs, and all they kept giving me was shit like JJ Acocha, Frank Lampard, Paul Scholes, <laughs> fucking Bobby Moore. Like, I'm not giving a fuck, man. Hit me I with have the to be a big JJ Acocha fan. Listen, he's got the five star skill moves, he's got the four star weak foot, like he's got the end games, but he's got no strength. He's got fuck it. He's he's lacking. Yeah, so they just kept hitting me with shit cards. So I got to the point where I sat there and I went, Do you know what? I'm not putting any more time into this game. So, so what are you, are you just sorry. all Call of Duty now? I, 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 I wanna just I wanna state so that Alex knows the background. Like me and Mike are both reeling from this information because like <laughs> Andy Mack was like our sort of FIFA guru. Like me and Mike are both shite at it. Like Andy's the strategy that goes into it is a level I never knew existed when it came to online sport gaming. So for for ultimate team anyway. No, I, I deleted my club. So deleted where where club, are you? Game. What are you doing now on Xbox? What are you playing? All right, so I guess I'll be starting off the reviews then this All week. Right, right. 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 Then. <laughs> Mike, you're gonna like this one. NBA 2K20. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're not going to like this review, bro. Four bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Okay, first of all, the career mode. Dude, like, I loaded up the game. It was on Games Pass on Xbox. Loaded up the game, and then I sat there for literally 40 minutes before I fucking as much as touched a basketball. Yep, it's wild. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's <laughs> I, fair criticism, yeah. The entire story mode then is over in about two and a half hours once you get drafted. I was like, uh, yeah, you dive into it more little pieces here and there throughout the, the season. Yeah. But okay. it's pretty much the, the the bones of it is done. Yeah. Yeah. The last one I played or was uh, when the next gen first came out on Xbox one, which was NBA 2K14. And I thought then that, that game was in terms of graphics and the step up from Xbox 360 revolutionary. Mm-hmm. The story mode and everything was actually really immersive. To then not play the franchise and come back six years later, I felt like the whole thing had been like zoop, chopped right down. And I was sitting there going, wow, this isn't anything like what I remember the NBA 2K franchise being. See, so I played it recently and I thought, like, see, so for instance, like if you play. Too hard to steal, man. Too hard yeah. to steal. It's, uh, yeah, like, it's constantly it's, giving you're, away you're fouls. Like, you're meant to build up your skills. However, it's so difficult. So they make it so that you have to spend a fortune before you can even pass in a straight line. Like I made, I tried and made my it's guy tough. like six foot three, and see when I was like holding the sprint button, he was just like lumbering in slow motion. All these people were just whizzing past him. Like fuck this game. Yeah, yeah, I, I had an issue with that. I was playing that last night, and I think my guy has just reached seventy overall. And it's, oh man, it's just taking so long. But you got to go to practice. If you go to practice, you get your stuff. And you got to play well in the games despite being, you know, a low-rated player. But it's tough to do that. I think the difficulty for me is that I don't know, you know, the game's evolved so much now in the the one-player mode that I don't know the intricacies between a small forward, a point guard, you know, this kind of thing. Like, I I get a feel of what they do, but I don't know all the little intricate details. Yeah. Um, and I noticed once I then deleted the game, I got a pop from Xbox Game Pass saying, hey, you got fucking 50,000 VC credits there for your fucking My oh, Career Flow. Really? I was like, yeah, my boy. I just fucking deleted it. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nightmare. I never so got I'm any free person. coins. Fuck. <laughs> Listen, man, four looks, like, looks like a decent game, but I'm going to give it four. Class, Next I, one I played. Yeah. Sorry, on you go. I just saying I would have given it two. You were much more generous than I would have. <laughs> it was all right, but I I still thought that back in the day, fourteen the story was more immersive in the career mode. Yeah. Throughout, once she'd been drafted, it wasn't just like sit here for two and a half hours and watch all this shit like a movie. In in fourteen, it went, and then that's it. In fourteen, it went all the way through the first season. Was that the one where the guy, where the guy had a friend who died? Your, your character has a friend who dies in a car crash or something. Oh, I can't remember. But mate, I was getting annoyed at that wee guy that hurt his knee. That boy's wee <laughs> knee. 
<laughs> and then they kept calling me Shay. I was like, my name's Andy Mack. <laughs> Big Shay, baby. I, I make Shay Mack call me Shay now. Son. <laughs> the commentators are going like, oh, that's a great pass by Andy. Oh, great touch there by Shay. I'm like, what is going on? Like, totally fucked. Four out of ten. Right, quickly moving on. Um, Forza Horizon. Playing a little bit of that. Interesting. It's not like usual Forza or Gran Turismo games. It's like pure, I'm a pure car dick. Do you know what I mean? Here's 12 circuits, and once you finish them, you can drive them in reverse. It's more like a Need for Speed style, so it's like stunts, races, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, so I'm going to give that six bananas. Nothing too amazing. I'm going to wrap up the games with Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, I never played it when it came out because I wasn't bothered. Me either. Played the first one, thought it was cool. I'm still more a GTA man, always will be. However, I spent GTA the last two oil. days, I spent the last two days hunting legendary animals and fucking fishing. Oh, for you, would. Fish. you would, you would, you know. Would. <laughs> fuck the story, man. I'm off just exploring and He's killing weird bears and on. shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, a bit of a slow burner for me, like. I don't think it's as good a game as GTA 5. I don't, or anything in the GTA series. I never, never put Red Dead up there, like, equal with it. But it's a slow burner, and I'm starting to be like, oh, shit, I just lost three hours playing that. <laughs> All I did was just cut about looking for deer. Are you into <laughs> westerns, though? Are you into, like, that wild, wild west period? Not really, like, spaghetti westerns and all that kind of stuff. No. Yeah. No, nah, not really. But, it all uh, went downhill after Wild Wild West, man. Like, uh. I played the first one. The first one was pretty dope. It was a different concept, but I think going back to it again, I think being a big Rockstar fan, I would have rather had another Grand Theft Auto. But they're making so much money on that online. Why the fuck would they create another game just now? We've got to milk that for all it's worth. I get it from a business sense. So. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, just to wrap up music wise, uh, Hus Kingpin, my boy, new album called Gunpowder, the Gunpowder LP. Unfortunately for Hus, I'm only going to give this one a six, just because as much as I love his stuff, I didn't feel like he picked the best beats for this project. All his rhymes are still dope, so I'm going to give that a six. Um, and other than that, I've just been mixing jazz albums and hip hop tracks for folk. And Jordan, thanks for lending me the bass. Uh, I went to see Jordan on Friday. Uh, we obviously socially stayed, distanced. Stayed distant, but uh, he gave me a shot of his bass, so that just allowed me to come back the last few days and polish off a few tracks that just needed a little bit of live bass. So, I was a wee bit embarrassing. So, like the other a few weeks ago, like my bass has been sitting there doing nothing for ages, and I got a load of stickers. We man got a load of stickers at Christmas, so like me and Riley like covered my bass in all these wee comic book stickers, thinking yeah. this will just be my little secret in the corner. <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> I will say, actually, see the scratch plate, the Mighty Bush scratch plate on the front was actually done by Mike's lady friend, Connie. She done that, like, eight years ago. She painted that for me, yeah. Looks like he's done in Tipex. (laughs) No, it does. Was it not? No, I think it was paints, I would imagine. What part did Connie do? Let me see. She doesn't see the bit that says Bush on it. Oh, wait, I have speaker if you want. i got to change it on. Andy, say something. Hello. (laughs) There you go. Look, that bit there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Connie done that like eight years ago. Oh, she's so artsy. Yeah. He's Superman sticker on the back as well. Nice touch. Just there. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So yeah, I now have the base of a 14 year old skater punk again. So that's nice. Hey, listen, I didn't have to boil the strings when I got it. So thank you for that. Like, I took it out the, the case and I was like, hmm, they actually sound kind of live. I'll get. Uh, but I've been playing it a wee bit during lockdown, but the problem is I've no desire to learn any new songs. I've just been playing the same six songs that I remember from when I was 16. That's what you need. So, <laughs> just bash out a couple of Ramones numbers. Uh, Alex, what about you? What have you been watching and or listening to? And I don't know if you know, we, you have to give it a rating out of 10 bananas. So okay. One, so, by the way. Um, I, uh, I've been watching Westworld. I, I just oh. caught up on the last series of that. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. I, I just watched this last season and it's it, none of it's in the Wild West. And I know that it, you know, it's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to move on and all that sort of stuff. But it, now the title just feels stupid. 
uh... <laughs> I, I think that show lost me after season two because like I thought the first season was awesome, but then it was like almost two years in between seasons. Yeah. And then the second one was good, but again, it's so much information and so much fucking crisscrossing that I was just like, I don't think I've got the mental capacity for this the third time. Well, if you thought series two, too much happened, but it wasn't convoluted enough, you will love series three. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you give out of 10 bananas? Yeah. Would, you, would you recommend? Uh, uh, no, no. I, I'm going to say like three bananas on that one. Oh. Yeah, Oof, that's negligible yeah. bananas. I like a guest that comes on and gives a realistic score. You know, it's not everything's not eight, nines, and tens. Do you know what I mean? I feel attacked. I feel attacked. Yeah, me too. Actually, <laughs> I, I'm now I'm now part too paranoid to give something seven bananas. Six, we once got feedback that goes, doesn't matter what it is, Jordan will give it seven bananas. <laughs> I'm clearly far too easily pleased. Well, what seven is the like middle high, isn't it? Uh, what else? Uh, I've been watching. Oh, what we do in the shadows. I've been watching Ooh. that. Yeah, I've that still... is. Yeah. Yeah, to watch the TV series, is it good? It is actually. I didn't. I really thought I was going to hate it because it was nothing like the original, and you know, it's done like on HBO, so it's got a much bigger budget. Mm. But yeah, it's basically uh, Matt Berry, Natasha Dimitriou. And Caven Novak in it, oh, okay. and they are, they're, yeah, they're all fantastic, and yeah, highly recommend it. I don't so, know, about that like, one. I know Andy won't have seen it, but have you seen the original What We Do in the Shadows film? It's about four. It's like a document. It's a fake documentary about four vampires from New Zealand. And I will say, anyone who watches this and hasn't seen What We Do in the Shadows, please at least check out the original film because it's fantastic. Yeah, it was done by Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement. Oh, well, Thor Ragnarok and Half of the Mighty Con- uh, the Flight of the Concords. Oh, yeah. Well, what would you give that one? What are you giving that? Oh, that, that one I'd give eight bananas. Solid, solid bananas on that one. Oh, ripe, <laughs> ready for eating bananas. <laughs> Just ready. <laughs> have you got anything else you want to give out? Like, do you, do you listen to what? See, when you're when you're drawing, do you tend to have something on in the background? Do you tend to just have music mm-hmm. playing, or? Yeah, no, it's it's generally podcasts and things on in the background. So, uh, like, do, can I mention other podcasts? Is that? Yes, strictly forbidden. What the hell is this? I don't know. It just it seemed like a bit of a dick move coming on a podcast and talking about other podcasts. <laughs> um. But yeah, basically, uh, for listening to one podcast, which is just called Behind the Bastards, and it's one dude, he's a journalist, just gets comedians on and just talks about the worst people in history and the weird shit that they get up to that nobody talks about. Like, it's got a thing, one episode about Hitler's love of romance novels and things like that, you know. (laughs) My my mum actually read a book, not long, just talking about Nazis, about... Um, like, <laughs> Smooth like, segue like, from the Nazis. I was. Uh... Well, it was literally to do with the amount of drugs that were taken by high-ranking officers in the Third Reich. Like they were all oh, on meth. All absolutely addicted to methamphetamine. So they gave the soldiers on the on the front line, guys like Heron Gorin and all them. They were all heavily addicted to morphine as well. Huge amount of drug peddling in the Nazi state. I mean, it, it does answer some questions. But it, it, really, it does, yeah. There's some reason you do that, yeah. yeah no excuses, <laughs> but, you know, there's some... Um, so, yeah, well, if you didn't catch the name of that, we're not saying it twice on this podcast, so... Yeah. I was listening, <laughs> rewind it. But. Spe- speaking of podcasts, uh, did uh, everyone see Joe Rogan is uh, a very rich man, richer a man than he was uh, last week? Yeah. The exclusive Spotify is a big move, like... Huge move, yeah. Huge that, move. I was, does that mean they'll take him off of YouTube as well? Yep. <clears throat> but he said he was smart about it. I heard today that he he licensed, he, he gave them to license to exclusively broadcast his podcast. So he still owns everything, still owns the IP, still owns everything. But for, I think it was for three years, three or five years, that it's only going to be on Spotify. So they're going to have to basically create like a video platform for him so he can get that stuff out there too. I think they're already testing that anyway. Jesus. But uh, podcasts are 
because I booted off, Spotify is really dumping a lot of money into it. It's a shame because I'll probably, I mean, I've already kind of stopped listening to him a bit. I also noticed that recently, or since the Elon Musk, the original, the, the first interview, the stuff no longer streams live on YouTube. But I think once it then goes off of YouTube, I'll be done with it. I won't go to Spotify as a platform for listening to podcasts because it's not the platform that I use. So mm. if he's not there, then too bad. I'll find somebody else. See, there's, there's, my problem with Joe Rogan is, is, is the total bro science. Where, like, the other day he had Tony Hawk on. And that's that's who I want to see him interviewing. Like, like he, he, was, he, he interviewed the guy from the old the old singer from Blink-182. And like the boy was going on about his aliens and like he went off for a pee. And all you hear is Joe Rogan just going, sceptical hippo eyes. <laughs> Because the guy was just chatting absolute bullshit. But hey, I'm the exact same as you, Andy. I think Joe Rogan seems to be burning out a bit. Well, well then, well, if, that's the, if, that's the case, he, if that's the case, he's signed this at the right time. But uh, he, he also is going to have a lot of – he's going to have clips. He's, they allowed him to have clips on YouTube. So, Andy, if you were to see somebody – let's say you saw somebody he interviewed that you like and you wanted to see it, would you not go to Spotify and just watch that one? That one? Hmm. Unless I was really intrigued, unless it was somebody like, I was like, holy fuck, he's interviewing them. Mm. I mean, it need to be somebody that really made me want to go and click. Yeah. That's yeah, hard to say. I can't tell you gets... who that person is right now, but. Um... Give it five years till he gets Trump on. That'll be, that'll happen. Oh my, Trump's going to have his own Spotify uh, channel. Just, I hate I hate talking about Trump, but I, it was the one the other day where he said <laughs> he was positively negative. Yeah. And it was just He's 30 more. seconds of him tripping over himself. So I tested negative in the positive sense. And you're just like, how are you the leader of the free <laughs> world? What the fuck is happening? He's this dumb. man clearly has some sort of dementia that needs to be, he needs assistance and it's, Fucking anyway. Uh, just think of this just a moment in his head. Oh, sorry, I just. <laughs> he just there's these bits. It's like it's just every now and again, it's Joe Rogan actually tweets it and he goes, "We're living in a movie. This is exactly what this isn't real anymore. This is <laughs> something's went wrong with the simulation." Yeah, have you got anything else you want to recommend, Alec? Uh, no, nothing to add. Cool, Mikey Dots. Um, I don't, I'm just going to think about music. I don't think I've been listening to anything new. Um, just really, really into podcasts, uh, the normal podcast that I listen to. I did start watching, watch and finish two shows. Has anyone seen Gangs of London yet? No, yeah, no, I've heard um, it's good. It's I've seen you've been enjoying it though, Mike. I've seen your crazy. Yeah. Oh my, it's it's wild. The ending, I'm not going to ruin it for everybody. The ending, the, the second to last episode is a bit, is a bit weird. It's not weird, but it's just kind of like uh, I'm not gonna say anymore. But um, really good action in the show. Um, the the characters are are, are really good. I, I didn't know that like um, that type of action, that type of gory action would would, would fly. I thought that would kind of be uh, like a an American thing, but it, it worked very very well, and I, I liked it a lot. But like I said, the ending was a bit weird. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll give that. I'll give it a six and a half because it was really good up until like the second to last episode and uh, the ending just ruined it for like the last two. And I was like, Oh fuck. And it kind of just took me out of the moment that I was in when I was sitting in front of the TV for like three days straight, like, Oh, I got to finish this. So I'll give it a six and a half. Um, I also watched this show. Uh, we just finished it up called normal people. It's basically just two Irish people having sex for about 12 episodes. It's weird, but it's about like, the, it's, it's about like, niche. it's a fairly niche uh, uh, genre. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it's about like these two people and they start in, in high school and it shows like their relationship until like they go to college and the things that affect them uh, outside of their relationship and how it does affect their relationship, if that makes sense. So, uh, oh. Yeah, so it, it's a bit slow at times, and it's like super dramatic. But I'll, I'll give it a seven. I thought it was thought it was decent. It's not too bad. Uh, and yeah, just been playing been playing Call of Duty. Uh, I'm now at the point where uh, I'm watching tutorials on YouTube because last night I don't know maybe because I was tired. I was really about to call Andy and just cry down the phone. I was like, I just can't. 
I just can't do it. I was just getting in and getting killed within like five minutes. It was bad. It was really, and it just seems like I let, I'll shoot someone. I'll waste my entire clip on someone and then they'll still kill me. I'm like, yo, what's going on? And then when they show, you know how they show you the video of after you die, they'll show you getting killed. Yeah. It doesn't even look like my gun's even raised. Like, there's no bullets coming out of my... You don't see them getting red. You know, you see, like, little red circles on there. You don't see them getting hit. There's no blood anywhere. But all I right. just get killed all the time. Big guy, wind it in. Wind it in, big guy. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> all right, listen. listen. I just need someone to talk to. <clears throat> we'll get you some words of advice. <clears throat> First thing, I've not actually played in about a week and a half. <laughs> ball. My favourite, Andy, was, like, the messages you were getting from people that you'd obviously met. <laughs> they were just... Furious at you. <laughs> oh, what my uh, FIFA hate mail. Oh, series. that was FIFA messages. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, those were FIFA ones. Um, that's where I used to wash myself in the tears of my haters. <laughs> you know what I mean? um, after I baptized them down FIFA. No, um, in Call of Duty, right? One thing I'll say to you, Mike, I haven't played in a week and a half. I know they've got new weapons in the Ghoulie. Is that right? Yeah, you can do automatic weapons in the Ghoulie now. Okay, I haven't been playing. Um, but what I would say is, I don't know what classes you're running, but I think if you one bit of advice, run an M4, run a Grau if you're running assault rifles. If you're going to run an SMG, run the MP7. That's it. You shouldn't have a situation. Make sure you're also putting in the extra ammo clips, like the 50 or the 60 rounds. Don't go the 60, go the 50. And then that way, you'll make sure that when you're drilling, boys, you're not you know, emptying the clip out and they're getting around the corner, you've got enough bullets to put them down. Don't also worry about putting guys that are down, down further. Make sure that there's not somebody else coming around to try and around, take you yeah. out. Because remember, they're, they're all communicating. Oh, guys, I'm down, down, side of the building. What's going to happen? You run around and put him down, and finish him off, and then his mate comes downstairs and kills you. And I always see, it feels like I had the, the sniper rifle and I was up in the mountains. I was picking people off. I got to pick the people off. But then, then when they saw me, it just seems like everyone's like like this, moving around like this. I don't stand still. Sniper. Never play with a sniper, mate. That Something was the first time doing it and I was successful with it. That's why I stuck with it. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. I had a bad night. Problem but is, was... everybody's running ghost and cold blooded. So if you've got the sniper, particularly the thermal sniper, you can't see fuck all. So guys are really good at running overkill with, say, an SMG for close quarters and then the sniper for long range. I think you're better just going for the RPG and going for an, a good assault rifle, the M4 or the Grau. Go for the Grau, man. It's most stable, particularly at distance. Why the, the RPG? RPG? Oh, clear yeah. buildings, man. You get up on the roof, pew, pew, pew. Oh, there's guys hitting the buy station. Doom, doom, doom. Just bang them with rockets, mate. <laughs> what are you saying, son? Any fucking vehicle comes towards you, <laughs> fucking fire a rocket at it. Bang, triple kill. Nightmare, boys, team wipe. Do, do, the, big, I mean? do the big weapons slow you down when you run? Yeah, but why would you run about with an RPG? So what you're going to do is you're going to run a Grout or an M4 assault rifle, and then you're going to run the RPG as your secondary weapon. Perfect, son. Mm. Oh, you need to come play with me, Mike. I do, Honestly, yeah. We'll fucking I tell you, it's, it's been really special to watch Mike's tension lift as Andy's just sort of stroked his head. Through. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> well, I feel relieved. You need to decide, what are you doing? Are you playing solos or are you playing in teams? I've been playing solos probably for the last for the last week. Teams is cool. I like teams. I like someone watching my back. Uh, but and I like never, solos. You never got anybody watching your back unless you're in a party with three two or three of your mates playing in that team together, communicating together. Nobody's yeah. ever going to have your back in a team if you're just going in there with a fucking fill of random... Don't trust no one, team. mate. Don't trust no one in the ghoulies, son. No, I'm just saying it's true, though. You can't... You, you know, they're not your friend. You're not in a party with them. You can't communicate and say, I've got the top window. You guys need to watch the stairs. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that with randoms that you're playing with. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so... And if you're yeah, playing the solos, difference. the other thing is not to run around too much, all right? Just fucking... No, uh, no I, easy, I, I've, Don't I've been playing... Easy. I, took your, I took your advice the last time. This is turning into a Call of Duty fucking podcast, but <laughs> I took your advice the first time, and I, I, I hover around the outside, and then a couple of... Maybe like a minute before it goes, I start working my way in, and then I just start kind of picking people off on the way in, and I was I, I was doing well. Last night was just a shit show, though. It was terrible. That's I'm getting it. marked everywhere. <laughs> The trick is to pinwheel round the circle. So if the fat edge is there, 
and the thin edge is there is to pinwheel around to the thin edge or the fat edge. So you, either way, you're working the gas as it comes in and it pushes everybody in off the map. Bang, you're in position to take them out and keep rotating around that circle as it gets around to the final one. Pinwheel strategy is the fucking winner, man. <laughs> Who wants to fucking play Call of Duty tonight, man? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go and get some beers and go and fucking. Mike, Mike was Mike was literally hanging on Andy's every word there. He was like, "Pinwheel strategy, man. Play the gas. That's the fucking secret to high kill games. You won't win every time, but you'll get a lot of kills." Right. What else you got, Mike? Um, yeah, so just uh, Call of Duty um, and just NBA 2K, Madden. I just have those three games in rotation. A little Fortnite every now and then, too. Um, but is that so you can just outsmart the children? Just to... What's that? Is that so you can just try and outsmart the children? No, my daughter is, my daughter has finished first twice already and second a few times as well. I'm terrible. I, I can't do it. She's I playing the it. pinwheel. That's why, man. <laughs> rotating around the gas. I, Same time as <laughs> playing Fortnite is they doing Warzone. I've honestly, like, I walk in to speak to Riley when he's playing it, man, and I end up getting a sore head when I see how quick his hands are moving on the oh, controller. Like, he was getting chased by some guy and he ended up just building something around the guy so the person was trapped inside this little thing, and then he made a hole in the roof and just shot him from the top. It was ruthless. <laughs> That's gangster. That's my boy. Honestly, man. It's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> ruthless. Like, one of his, I could hear one of his pals in the head, like, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Riley's like, point blank shotgun. Oh, fuck off. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I've been fucking watching breaks. I watched a, a horror film called Oculus um, last night. It's directed by the same guy that done Haunt in the Hill House, I'm sure. Um, mm. And it's I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's like there's a haunted mirror, and timeline changes. But I'm not selling it. It's really well done. Like we stuck it on as like a wee time filler yesterday, and like genuinely sat with our phones down and watched the entire thing. Um, so sort of like it's a brother and a sister trying to settle their demons type of thing, and uh, well worth a watch. That actually I guess eight bananas from me in terms of. It's really hard now to find a horror that isn't just the same sort of A to B, B to C plot line. It was actually like all over the place, but really well. Like you, know, you get these films like Westworld, where it's it's really clever, but then they try and be more clever, and it just ends up being so convoluted that you can't follow it at all. This one toes the line perfectly. So eight bananas for Oculus. Uh, rewatched Rain of Fire, two thousand and two dragon film with Christian Bale and Matthew McConaughey. Amazing. Uh, I fucking love Matthew McConaughey, man. Like, if there's like, you know, you can always get him. What what celebrity would you like to go drinking with? I want to go drinking with Matthew McConaughey. I reckon it'd be an absolute session. Um, Fair play to the guy because he turned his career around from being typecast in the rom coms to somebody who could play like actual roles. In in this film, in this film, he plays an absolutely jacked ex marine. Who runs a helicopter dragon fighting unit? Do you know what I mean? Ah, legit. And he's, like, he's absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he's hench, man. So that guy gets a six. You know what I mean? It's not the greatest film in the world, but like in terms of just an hour and a half of stupid entertainment, I very much enjoyed it. Um, I watched the the Shining sequel, Doctor Sleep, with Ewan McGregor. It's not bad. Like, like I think it's. I think I think the Shining suffered from the fact of like. Steve King hates it, I think, because most of the shit in the shine in the book is inside Jack Nicholson's character's head. So in the book, you don't, you don't really like in the book it like really details his descent into madness, whereas I think the film doesn't really have that. But the sequel is really good. Ewan McGregor plays his grown-up son, trying to help another child who has the the shine and like the the ability to speak to the ghosts and shit. So that was that was a decent watch. That. Um, Really well done. Looked great. I'll give that seven bananas. Again, it's not going to change your life, but if you're looking to fill a couple hours, it's a decent way to do it. Um, just started playing Red Dead 2 with Chuff, so I'll report back on that next week. I'm still trying to make my way through a, a graphic novel that Alex recommended to me called The Filth. Oh, and man. It's taken me about three weeks because it is so <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. When you go back to Red Dead Redemption, when you play with Chuff, who's on the sticks? Give me a percent there, a percentage out of 100. Uh, 60, 40 maybe, you? Yeah, 60, 40 her, probably. Yeah, like, her? Okay. She, she's much I better. I can't do that, man. She's like, I'm, I've always and continue to be absolutely terrible at computer games. There's like a, mm. there's a ceiling I'll hit 
if I can't get past something, I've just I've no interest in continuing. So like I'll get to a bit, she'll do the difficult bits, and then I'll just fanny about and do all the wee stupid bits on the side. Next week I want an update on how many legendary fish and how many <laughs> legendary animals that you've killed. Because I am walking about with a bear hat and fucking alligator shoes right now, son. <laughs> you look like a bear. <laughs> killing it. You know what I don't like? I hate, when you, I hate when you have a, a mission like all the way across the map and it's like, sometimes you can take the train, but sometimes it's like, if you got to ride your horse there, it's like... You just eh. fast track. How, how do you do that? So you just set up a... What the fuck? I've been playing this like four days and already you guys are like, hey, how'd you do that? Uh, you So when you're with your horse, you know how you would like set up a camp to like sleep overnight? Yeah. Yeah, just set one of them up and when you go to the fire, it gives you off option to like sleep, craft or cook or fast travel. That's it. you got to oh. make sure you uh, chapter two though. Got to make sure you what? Completed chapter two. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, this is fast becoming a gaming podcast. It but is, yeah. Still trying to make my way through this book, The Filth, which is, is I don't even know how to describe it. Um, Alex was the guy, was the one who got me into the Preacher books that I raved about um, earlier in the year, and he immediately got me to jump from that to a book called The Filth, which is just the most mind-bending shit you ever thought could be drawn on a page. So I'm still making my way through that. I keep having to like, read, a, read an issue and then go back to the start and reread it just to make sure I think I've got the right end of the stick, which is not always yeah. successful. It's kind of unexplainable is the problem with that book, because yeah. it's almost just about a guy who's having a bad day in his apartment, but then also about reality at large, and uh, yeah, I can't uh, yeah. even begin. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sensational, but uh, I'll, I'll eventually get to that probably about the end of the year, so... Um, but like I don't know, like I, I made this big thing about trying to read more this year, and it's went down the pan the last five weeks, big <laughs> time. But um, I think that's about me, anyway. So shall we wrap this bitch up? Yeah. Lovely. Right. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to Alex. Alex, do you want to hand out your your Instagram, and then that way you can advertise something? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Finally, uh, Hawkatorium on Instagram and Twitter, and yeah, I think that's it. But yeah, generally Hawkator and Hawk yeah, I, I don't know if anyone, any of our listeners are big into Star Star Trek. Alex actually done a, a series where he drew a Star Trek character a day up until the la the this new series of Picard came out and some of them are fantastic, so definitely check out. I have a quick question just to, to tie that up. Um do you take commissions for any E P like covers or album covers or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I've done a couple of album covers in the past actually. So, uh, yeah, they're on my Instagram as well. Cool. I'm yeah. going to check them out because I might be, be in touch Fantastic. With yeah, <laughs> please give me a shout. Will do. Right, so, uh, so you can find us on YouTube. We are exclusively on YouTube right now until we can uh, get ourselves back into a situation where we can meet in person and start putting the money back up online. Um, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook at Monk's Nord Fight Podcast and Twitter, MSF underscore podcast. <clears throat> I am also on Twitter at Wagwan Patrice. I am also at, on Twitter at underscore M dots. And I'm there as well at Macapella. Right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope everyone's staying safe. We will catch you later. Peace. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.